them up as I go. And I wanted to give you a chance to look at your cards too because it looks different than what you were looking at yep. last night. So just so that you get an idea of the look of it. I'm very visual, so. Yep. They're going back on. Uh, we are going to have them on. So what I wanted to do is, um, okay. Allison and Robin, I'm gonna say it to two people so that two people might remember, help me remember. Last night when we rehearsed Fashion Walk, we talked about how the models needed to exit. That is different now that the room is set up. So, and, and I'm gonna go over that. I plan to go over that with them, but hopefully I don't forget. So that's why I'm telling you. Right. Like, girl, do you think I had time to do that? That's exactly probably what. Do you want me to say that? Yeah. Girl, do you think you read the quotes because you know yeah. to make sure that we that's get correct. them right? Yep. So Perfect. yeah. Um, okay. So we'll be over here. I know I'm gonna forget. I know I'm gonna walk away um, and forget. So if we could give Tax the job of turning the microphone off, then that way Tax turns off. As soon as he gets past here, you can start. You know what I'm saying? And that'll that'll give us a little more time in between there. Does that make sense? I'm not going to worry about turning it on and off because that's already making my armpits sweat more. <laughs> um, Good thing I thought of you. He did them. He did them. I know. You rhinestone like those? The dirty hair. You just yeah. I rhinestone like everything. I rhinestone oh, my shirt. Oh my word! That's my mom's outfit. You can't buy these. You made those. You made those. And everything I wear today. I want them All the stones I wear. You did. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. You rhinestone. Hello, my name is Connor. Um, I worked with, I worked in a, uh, not worked, I took a class uh, at Polk State a while ago. At, um, not Polk State. <laughs> uh, in, in an art museum in this area, um, it was like a drama class and I was one of your students and it gave me a whole new appreciation for acting that I would not have had before and that is something that I'm truly grateful for and it has, kind of impacted the path I've gone on as an artist uh, to now, and for that I'm forever thankful. Okay, Rick, you remember this? You gave me this back in 1993, and it's always represented to me the belief that you have that every child is an artist, and the story that you told was that you worked with the teacher who did up and down staircase. When you're a teacher in New York City, you believe in the children that no one else believed in. You had them create their own museum and curate it with the whole thing that if they created it, these throwaway kids would actually take care of the art that they created. And this is one of those pieces that I've held on to as a reminder that if they create it, it belongs to them, it belongs to everyone. Just like when you worked with us at the Children's Museum and you brought the artist out in every child of every age, from the 90-year-old grandmother to the seven-year-old nephew who said they couldn't paint. You said, okay, you can't paint, but can you fill in these numbers for me? And you created all the murals in a paint-by-number format, and every child owned that art. Thank you, Rick. We love you. Am I supposed to smile or...
natural. I don't know how to do anything. I'm bad at this stuff. Um, during my speech, I will at some point say, um, ask for the featured artists to go to their staging area. Your staging area, just stay right here. I'll be right back. And then they're coming back here to escort the Then who the turns around in front of you. So a model is going to come back here and they're gonna grab a flower thing, and then they're gonna turn around and you're gonna follow them. Okay, that's, easy. that's all you gotta do for that part. You are next to last in the programming um, for the evening, and I'm putting it in quotes because it's Patty's act for the evening, so I am gonna ask the room to stay kinda hushed. We're we have a book. How is stand-up uh, comic supposed to write jokes when everything sucks and nothing's funny? And I'll be like, it's all yours oh, now. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> what a lead it. Yeah. I think that's the best thing. Yeah. So, and I can banter with you. We can banter okay. with you. So time. I'm going to say this. Now, how will we know you're done? Is there any sort of thing? You're like, I'm done. Or do you want to, like, we can watch for you. I'm we'll out. be over here. We'll be Whatever. over here. Like, just watch for you and you can kind of like direct us. I think I have an ending line, but I, I probably am not going to use it. Okay. And I will come. Like, And Patty, who's still getting dressed, is Jeremy. Sarah is behind Jeremy. Jenny, uh, at, uh, behind Jenny. And then Josh is at the end, and the mom is there. So, Ron, you're first. Okay. Okay. So, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how much she told you, so I'm just going to kind of run down, run down again. I'm going over here. The models are going to, are going to walk the runway, and then... They're gonna come back and we're gonna kinda of need to leave a little space in between them because they'll kind of fill in. I'm gonna hand them a thing and then they're gonna escort you. You're gonna follow them kind of, not really escort, out onto the stage. So you'll just walk, you're not posing, you're just walking through. And um, they'll kind of position you on the stage and give you the flower arrangement, the lay or however we wanna call them. Lay, a thing, the flower, the beautiful flower thing. The flower. Uh, they'll, it'll take. Is it like when they, when they come over here, are they gonna like say my name and then I'm gonna go yeah. out, or I'm just gonna nope. follow so, them when they yep. go? So okay. your person is um, Alexis. She's the first one. So when she gets through and she gets told to go, and I'm gonna have you scoot back a little bit. But right now it's fine. When she just walks, you just kind of walk behind her, and then when I tell the next person, they're just gonna walk and go from there. So, and then the models will cycle through, so I can tell you who you're walk, walking behind if you want to. And so that's it. Then they're gonna do a little thing and kind of stand up there, you know, <laughs> talk a little, you know. And that's it. Cool. So Amber is getting 
final touches on dress. She's getting changed. So we're going to do a quick run through of it so you kind of see how that goes. So this is sort of how it is. We've got a few people missing. Okay, Rick, this is Stevie Bach, and you probably really don't know me, but you stopped me one day at um, an art show in my car and did a sketch for me, and I still got it. I know who you were because you've been around since the Jordan the Museum. That's how long I remember you. So anyway, I wish you the best. I'm trying to follow what's going on. Lots of prayers. Love you. Thanks. Hi Rick, it's Meredith. I remember you from the museum. I'm sure you remember me hanging out at Letty's house after Mayfair, all those good things. And one of the, my favorite things I remember is when you would dress up like a pirate to teach summer art class with the kids. And one time you said you always know a Ren Fair person because their boots cost more than their car. And I will never forget that because it is so true. Thank you for everything you've done over the years and all of the impact you've made on the lives of the children in our community. We appreciate you, Rick. Um, Good or a terrible TED talk. There's no in between. <laughs> yeah, how are you? Great. What can I get to? Um, what are the two different So this is a ginger lavender lemonade. The berry sparkle has strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, a little bit of fresh lime juice, agave, and soda water. The big apple is fresh pressed apple juice, cranberry, a spiced strawberry honey, and a little bit of lemon juice. Um, it's been 
to welcome you all here to Abstract Art of Recovery exhibition and fundraiser for Abstract Art of Recovery, a documentary series featuring artists and their stories from ache to art. This, is, this project is produced by Grub Arts and was filmed by Justin Phillips with Real Moments Media. We're gonna get started really soon, but first I would like to say some thank yous and give some housekeeping tips. Um, so if you'll bear with me. Um, Ron Bell, Claudia Iris Bloom, Joyce Bigaski, Desi Maravilla Dalen, Stefan Dolbashan, Jenny Ellis, Nate Fleming, Josh Bump Galetta, JJ Humphrey, Patty Cannoli, Mara Latore, Bethany Lynam, Richard Olivo, Jeremy Rivera, Mama Ashley Rose, and Sarah Walston. Please give them a round of applause. The theme art of recovery was suggested by my new friend and tattooist, featured artist Ron Bell. Sober now, seven years, nine months, and 17 days. project has actually um, evolved outside of the scope that Ron's vision um, was originally, which is to do an art exhibition where all of the featured artists are recovering from addiction. So we really look forward to, in the future, um, Ron doing a show of his own and having his vision um, come to life. But I really appreciate you, buddy. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so a sort of sub theme developed along the way as we were filming these episodes. Um, I found that several of the artists were tethered by this sort of through line of healing through nature, um, touching and cultivating flowers and plants. And girl, I knew you were going to be wearing some sensible shoes, so I just took my yeah. Took my I need great boots. I need great boots. <laughs> that you're a queen that doesn't wear heels. Oh yeah, we don't do that. Doctor's orders. Uh, Doctor's did you uh, memorize your cue cards? Girl, you know me. Do I have time to memorize a cue card? <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> thank okay, you, okay. Thank you for printing it out and highlighting it for me. Because, you know, anybody that knows me, when do I have time, right? right? Anything, anything <laughs> to help you out. Okay, are we going to do this? Let's do this. Let's do Let's get to it. Let's okay. get to it. You're first. Oh, I'm first! <laughs> See, you know, this is, again, I didn't study. Yeah. So, Native American model, uh, novelist, poet, and filmmaker Sherman Alessi said this. There are all kinds of addicts, I guess. We all have pain. We all look for ways to make the pain go away. Featured artists Molly Ayler, Academy Director, and Stefan Bashan, Artistic Director and Resident Choreographer of Florida Dance Theater, are partners both in dance and in life. Here performing for us tonight, an old piece with a new perspective and a broader scope. What was once titled Unsaved is now titled Stronghold. Let's give a round of applause.
She, there she is. <laughs> She's among other distinctions, a prolific dancer, currently working on her MFA in choreography. Her solo tonight, titled In the Unfolding, quote, explores the vulnerability of unfolding oneself
featured artist Claudia Iris Bloom, who isn't here with us tonight for health reasons. Where do I fit? Maybe I don't fit anywhere, and I fit everywhere. I've had tea and crumpets in the Plaza Hotel's Palm Court, libations floating with gardenias and poo-poo platters in Trader Vic's, played stoop ball with a key on a grimy string hung around my neck, danced the night away in my slinky black dress, pulled weeds in early morning dew, danced on bars and kissed a few, stuck my hands in clay, lost and found myself, found God too. Where do I fit? One shoe fits all here. I have suffered great losses, risen from ashes to shine over and over again. I have been someone's sorrow and joy, my own and yours. Where do I fit? Born a Protestant, Catholic, Jew, and practicing nun, married, divorced, straight, gay, human, where do I fit? Not in a peg, perfectly chiseled, but in the wind, howling your name, O oh, nameless one. Howling your name. Where do I fit? Nowhere and everywhere I am home. that I used for the documentary series episodes was three parts. We did a sit-down chat, a show-and-tell, and then a cooperative um, activity of some sort. And one of the things that I learned from the process can be summed up in a quote by one of my favorite essayists, Robert Fulgham. From his book, It Was On Fire When I Laid Down On It, an excerpt from an essay titled Show and Tell. Again and again, I learned that what I thought was only true for me, only valued by me, only cared about by me, was common property. This project and its episodes are a sort of compilation of essays about people whose stories are as different as they are alike and all tethered by some commonality. Drawers and dancers, painters and poets, sculptors, and singers, a florist and a comedian, all walked into the garden and showed each other their tattoos, bared their souls, shared their scars, and said some things are better now, but some things are not. See that little green thing there, said Rick Olivo? That's hope. Tell you something about my life. Maybe give me something to be black and white. And the best thing you ever done for me is you helped me take my life less seriously. It's only life after all. Yeah, I have answers, hopefully, for you. I really hope you do, because yeah. I don't know the answer to this. So, 
how is a stand-up comedian supposed to write jokes when everything sucks? Yeah, the uh, good thing is, comedy is mostly tragedy, so all we do <laughs> that is, is take that tragedy and laugh at it a little, right? Yeah. What's up, guys? I'm not used to doing stand-up where I can see faces. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not used to just staring straight at people's disappointment while I say some of the things I say. It's like talking with my mom, but like on a large scale. I've been doing stand-up since I was eight, and since like then, I haven't like changed how I do stand-up, but I, as a performer, I've changed. I've gone through a lot. I've gotten older. I've gotten larger in two ways. So I'm, I'm, I should have changed, but I never did. I was raised like super conservative Christian, like grew up on McGee and me, and the Katinas, if you guys are, I, I don't know if these are deep cuts, too deep for you, but I was real deep. I was heavily embedded in it all. Uh, that was part of my identity for a while, so all my stand-up was rooted in conservative ideals. My stand-up is to convert you and bring you to heaven, where we'll all dance in a golden street. Yeah, it sounds like a not fun at all. Why would you use gold to pave a road? It's soft metal. You're going to sink right in. No one ever told them about science? You know? No, 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 no. I guess not. Uh, the other part of my identity that I largely used as the punchline, as the butt of a joke, is the fact that I'm black. You look at me and you're like, what? No! This Jewish guy can't say that! But no, I, I am. My dad's black, my mom's white. So uh, my mom specifically is German. She's the good German. We came over after the Civil War and before World War II. So nestled right in the pocket, a little good German pocket. But my identity has always been a struggle for me because when it comes to racial identity, a lot of times who you are is defined by what other people see of you, not by your own self. And me, personally, I have a hard time defining what my identity is, because I don't fit either of those identities. So for 22 years, I've just been awful inside this head. It's been a pain. God, imagine being me. I'm, I used to be Christian, but now I'm not. My parents used to hate me, now they don't. My grandparents definitely hate me. But on which side? Because I have the black side, I have the white side, and they hate me for different reasons than the other side hates me, because my grandmother actually hates the fact that my dad married a white woman. That's something I found out last year. <laughs> dad's 65th birthday, actually. So it, it was a wild ride. It's a story that he's going to tell. I'm going to tease it and I'll never talk about it because I respect the fact that my dad doesn't want me just sharing his business out there like that. But my grandmother hated the fact that my dad married a white woman. Oh my God, it was terrible. And honestly, prior to 1967, so did all of America. So it just kind of lines up, you know? It wasn't until uh, Virginia versus Loving happened. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Yeah, Virginia versus Loving. I'm a huge history buff. I love anything about the past. Um, until you realize that you're a black person looking back, and then you're like, wow, Jesus Christ, this is all just bad. It's, there's nothing good here. Nothing at all. So when I was younger, speaking of history, I had something called a celestial seeker. It's like a little plastic thing. It looks kind of like a, it's a clamshell. It would open up, and inside is a compass, and on the, on the bottom, where your palm is, and on the back side, when you flip it up, there's like a, a, a backlight, and you would slide in different constellations, and when you click the light on, it lights up, it tells you where to look in the night sky, what you're looking for, you can find the constellation, you can orient yourself, it was amazing. So it's crazy how often history has changed to fit whatever we needed to do. In Jurassic Park, they needed those velociraptors to be scary, fast, dangerous, terrifying. And every February, we need Black History Month to be what? Right. Right. I'm sorry, I keep mixing right and white. Black History Month sucks, guys. It does not tell the full thing. We love hearing Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. Oh, dude, it's so good. It's quoted on every news station, no matter who you are. I have a dream that one day children of color and white children will hold hands and play together in the park. Do you know, like, three years later, he called that dream a nightmare? Yeah, that's interesting that the nightmare portion of it is left out. That's the part we don't learn about. That's the part we don't see. That's the part of me being black I didn't know. I didn't know that he didn't like that speech. He called it an optimistic dream and that we need to take the race issue that is happening here and bring it back into realism. And I know, I'm supposed to be a comedian. Listen, you'll laugh at some point or you won't. If anything, you'll go home and you have learned something. And then any of the jokes I have, you'll just take it, stick it in your pocket, and later on you'll be like, oh, he was really passionate about Velociraptors for no discernible reason. 
kid's got mental issues on mental issues, and it's all solved by dinosaurs and stars. <laughs> Harriet Tubman, another one that we learned a lot about. What you didn't know is that she had severe mental handicap for her entire life almost. When she was younger, she was hit in the head with a two pound weight by her overseer, which is a nice term by her slave master. It's just like the actual term for it. So this woman who helped build the Underground Railroad and saved at minimum 70 enslaved people was severely mentally handicapped to the point where she could never learn how to read because she was physically incapable of doing so because of how she was made as a child. pity face from day to day, and all our yesterdays have lighted full to dusty death. I'm up, brief candle. Life is but a walking player, a, a, a player who struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. A tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. <laughs> I'm speaking. I call I'm speaking. Oh my. I was dead. 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 I